Hello, this is Pete. Welcome to EmpowerCast. This is the iWorks series. We're going to start by exploring the Colors Inspector. I'm going to use Pages as my application to demonstrate these things. However, keep in mind that all of the things we learn here are applicable to anywhere in the OS that calls for the OS System Color Inspector. So that would be the entire iWork package, Pages, Keynote, and Numbers, as well as iWeb, and many other applications that call for the OS X Colors Inspector. So I'm just going to start with a blank page layout document. And I'm going to open the Colors Inspector. If you don't know how to open the Colors Inspector, in Pages it's in the upper right hand corner. Let me see the Colors Inspector here. Or you can pull down the View menu and click Show Colors and then there's the keyboard shortcut shift command C. So here's our colors inspector. And as you can see from the colors inspector, there are five tabs across the top of the colors inspector. The first tab is the color wheel, which we'll cover in this tutorial. There's the color sliders tab, color palettes, image palettes, and crayons. I'm going to put a shape on my canvas by pulling down the Shapes menu and choosing a star. And I'll just enlarge that star. And we'll use that as our demonstration for filling with color. Once the star is selected, it's important that I choose the Object Inspector, which is here in the regular inspector. I'll click on the Graphic Inspector tab, and it's broken down, I, you can see, into five sections. The Fill section, Stroke, Shadow, Reflection, and Opacity. So I'm going to go to the Fill section, and by default, my selection is on Color Fill. This EmpowerCast series will cover all of the options under the Color Fill menu. For this particular episode, we're going to focus on Color Fill. To select a color, I need to highlight the swatch, and please note that when I highlight the swatch, the frame around the swatch turns a dark gray. That means I'm now ready to select a color from the color wheel. I once asked an Apple developer, how many colors are in that color wheel? And he said all of them. There's really no color you can't produce within this color wheel in the Colors Inspector. By clicking my mouse and dragging anywhere in the color wheel, I can pick up that color. What I like about this is I can watch my object or my graphic and stop the mouse when my object or graphic is, is on that perfect color. I can also adjust the brightness of whatever color I choose with this vertical brightness slider, which will keep the color tone, but just change the brightness. Once I decide on a custom color, and I've decided that the color is just right for what I want to do, I can store that color for later use by clicking on the swatch above the color wheel and dragging that swatch to the system tray or the color inspectors tray. You can see here that that color is now stored as one of my default color selections. I can expand that color tray so I can have lots of different colors saved for future use. What's great about that is if I go through and make another shape now and I need it to be the very same color I can click on the color in my color tray to change it to the same color. I don't have to go through and try to duplicate that color in the color wheel. If I decide I no longer want that color in the color tray, I'm just going to drag a white tile right on top of that blue tile, and that has deleted that color from my color tray. So I'm going to take my custom color that I've created here and drag it down into the system tray and then I'm going to launch the Keynote application, also part of the iWork package.
In Keynote, I'm just going to open a new theme with a white background. And I'm going to create a shape. When I go to change the color of that shape to color fill and then click on the swatch, my colors inspector comes up and that custom blue icon we created over in pages appears here in Keynote as well. And that can also be expanded here, same way we did over here in pages. At the bottom of the color wheel tab of the colors inspector, there's an opacity slider. And that opacity slider determines whether the object is transparent or opaque. So to edit the opacity of the circle, which is sitting above the star, I need to click on the swatch under fill to select it to indicate that I want to alter that color. And then I can go down to the opacity slider. And as I slide it down, you can see the opacity changes and it becomes more transparent. I can make that object 50% and you can see the transparency. Now earlier I saved that blue custom color to my color palette tray. I can also save colors with opacity settings as well. So I can drag that color down and drop that in the tray. And you'll notice the difference between the two my first custom color is solid. The second custom color has a slash through it, which shows light to dark. That's my indication that this is a custom color with opacity saved. If we switch over to Keynote, note that custom selection is already available in Keynote. We hope you liked episode one of the Color Fill series of Empower Max Empowercast. My name's Pete, and we hope you'll check out episode two, which is hue, saturation, and brightness sliders, as well as the crayon box tab of the colors inspector. Thanks for tuning in.